Hi, my name is Doug Difford. I'm here today as a member of our Savior's 150th year celebration committee. The theme our committee has chosen for this major event in our history is honor the past and embrace the future. To carry out our theme, the committee has planned many major events over the course of the rest of this year. Today, the committee wants to highlight our focus on an art piece that symbolizes our Savior's commitment to our faith. My pleasure today to introduce to you Mr. Paris Pash. He is an artist, a pastor, and an engineer. He is a local Hastings artist who has done many local sculptures as well as national sculptures. He will describe for you his suggested sculpture, which our celebration committee recommends be commissioned to commemorate our Savior's 150 years of serving the Lord. He will describe for you his suggested sculpture, which our celebration committee recommends be commissioned to commemorate our Savior's 150 years of serving the Lord. It's my pleasure to introduce to you Mr. Paris Pash. Well, hello, our Savior's uh, church family. I've been invited to present a conceptual drawing of a metal sculpture to commemorate your church's 150 year anniversary. Now, I have 55 years of professional sculpting taking me across the nation and wonderfully into my own hometown. The piece that we're looking at is intended to be on the south side of your facility here. And the medium that I will be using is called Corten steel or weathering steel. I'm also using limestone. And the reason I'm using these materials is because they require no maintenance or care. The Corten steel has a relatively kind of chocolate brown tones uh, and as it ages over the years, but it just lasts forever. I seek when I work on a piece of sculpture to gain inspiration, and the inspiration for this one came through some of your leadership. They gave me input. Uh, they shared with me mission statement, a vision, and passions. And all of the input that they gave me kind of led me to a scripture text that I think just is so exciting as kind of a platform for the design. It comes in Luke chapter 19, and it reads that Jesus entered a town and people spread their cloaks on the ground and joyfully shouted praise to God. They said, blessed is the king who comes in the name of the Lord, peace in heaven and glory in the highest. Well, there were some observing Pharisees who kind of scolded Jesus for allowing this type of adoration. So Jesus responded, if they keep quiet, the stones will cry out. I want you to allow me to show you what this collective inspiration brought me to. So here's a picture, a very simple line drawing of the sculpture that I believe would tell such a wonderful story. And I'm gonna to purpose to just kind of break down some of the parts of it to see if you can capture it uh, through my words. You'll see the musical staff, uh, you'll see the treble clef. They're all seen erupting through limestone boulders in the base, which are representative of the historical bedrock of this region and the 150 year labor in Hastings to draw people into a life of faith and service. Now our Savior's Lutheran Church has long seen worship as an essential component of their congregation's passion in the life of faith. And here the music is breaking through and it's telling the, of the story of this congregation's unyielding desire to glorify God. Now in the sculpture base, as well as the limestone boulders, you'll note that there are fracture lines. As I was being inspired by your leadership, it led me to represent the brokenness that they spoke to me about that all of us possess without Christ. It helps tell the, the history of this flock through the years of personal sacrifice and human frailty and then reveals that there is no glory without the cross and no resurrection without the passion. Hopefully you can see the angel 
the angelic figure seen swiftly carrying the collected notes of song heavenward, which is represented by the cross. We see him moving with grace and elegance and presenting these notes before the throne. Across the bottom of the base, you'll see the declaration of glory in the highest. This is the great proclamation of Christ's deity among mankind. And we also have the vision to insert a time capsule to allow the creation of a snapshot of history to be revealed in the many days in the future. Now next, I'd like you to see that there is an overlay photo. It's just a, a digital expression of the sculpture in scale size in front of the wall or in the green space between the wall and the sidewalk. There's going to be a tremendous amount of drama and texture. There's going to be a lot of impact by this piece. In fact, it's, the scale of it is that it's nearly 14 feet tall. So you'll actually be able to see this from Highway 55 if you're looking for it. Now, for those of you that maybe have never seen my work before, as I said earlier, I have work all over the United States. I've got a large core 10 fountain on Fifth Avenue in New York and done some work for Oprah Winfrey and many places around the region. Uh, but I wanted to show you an example. And so I've got just one shot of the City Hall sculpture, which is on 3rd and Vermilion in Hastings on the north side of the building in the green space. This lets you see what Core 10 looks like. Well, let me take you back to the sculpture photo again. I really want to say to you folks, it's an exciting possibility for me that lies in my life. The potential designing of a grand piece of art for your congregation's celebration of 150 years of service to your community and God brings great joy to me, and I look forward to the privilege to be able to serve you. Thank you very much. Thanks, Paris. That was a great presentation. I'm thrilled every time I see an artist, an engineer, and a pastor take his talents and put him to a sculpture like this. We'll be proud, proud to have your sculpture, I'm sure. I'm asking the congregation to join the committee who recommends this, to join the committee in financing this project. The project is approximately $40,000, and Mr. Paris Pash has guaranteed the price until July 11th. And that's why we're doing this, so that we can get our decisions made. And we will not use any current church funds for this project. It will not compete with operational costs or anything else the church is doing that's in the budget. We will raise this money for the sculpture by July 11th, and we will ask donors to come forward. We already have a donor for $10,000 as a challenge grant. So if someone's got 10,000, that makes us have 20,000. So we're halfway there already. So with that, I wanted to thank you all for watching this today and thank Mr. Paris Pash for giving us such a great opportunity our saviors to serve the Lord for another 150 years.